country, but nobody can ever do the World 100. Good race fans, Jerry Clown with a race review video here at Eldora Speedway. It's September the 9th, 1989, and Rossburg, Ohio, Eldora Speedway celebrating the 19th annual 1989 World's 100. As Terry said, this is a race that cannot be duplicated. This year's car count, the largest ever, 208 of the finest late models in the country are here tonight at Eldora Speedway. Are uh, lapping now in groups of uh, 20, 25 cars at a time. They're checking out the track conditions, about to get ready for the big time trial events. And several top drivers in the country, the 21 car of Billy Moyer. And looking at the last year's winner, the defending champion, Scott Bloomquist out of Tennessee. He won the big race last year, the first time he ever set wheels on Eldora Speedway. And Billy Moyer, his new day racing team, one of the, the sharpest teams in the country. The 19th annual World's 100. Of course, you've got race fans coming in from 30 states around the country. This has become an annual event for these fans, a spectacular event that they don't want to miss out on. The Eldora World's 100, a real racing spectacle. You remain seated during the racing activity. Check out that crowd. Eldora Speedway full again. A capacity crowd here. And the infields is completely filled with race car teams. We're going to be highlighting the top 40 cars. Uh, briefly going through some of the fastest qualifiers. And then we're going to go over the top 40 times. Scott Bloomquist, as we said before, he won the championship last year. Picked up the big victory. His first time ever at Eldora Speedway. He sets fast time at 16.590. And that was the fastest qualifier lap for the 1989 World 100. Scott Bloomquist, a great young driver out of Tennessee. Other top qualifiers, Jeff Purvis, a three-time winner of this classic, 83, 84, and 86. Purvis came out his first lap was 16.859. He got faster the second time around at 16.153. Jeff Purvis, the second fast time of the night. Randy Boggs from Grayson, Kentucky. He won the World 100 in 1987. Changed his card at 17 after that race. That was his 17th annual. And this time was 17.390, the fast lap for Randy Boggs. And that was the 24th fastest time on the 208 car field. Brother Jack Boggs come back out, the B4 car. And Jack's fast lap after brushing the wall there in turn two was 16.731. Jack Buggs had the fourth fastest qualifying time on the entire 208 car field. Another top qualifier out of Razorburg, Ohio was Donnie Moran, the former all-star late battle champion, was looking good at Eldora Speedway. In fact, every time he came to Eldora in 1989, he had won the late model feature event. Two times he's been here and two feature wins. Donnie looked good for 1989. His lap 16.671 was the third fastest qualifying time of the night. We're going to recap now the top 40 cars for you again. Fast qualifier was Scott Bloomquist from the 18 car at 16.590. And we have Jeff Purvis in the X15 car at 16.653. Donnie Moran was Third quick time at 16.671. And right on down the list, as you get a chance to look for your favorite driver here for 1989 running the World 100.
There's your top qualifiers, the top 40 cars out of the 208 car field, and their times were very fast. There was 168 additional cars that took the flags at Eldora Speedway. The fastest 120 cars will be starting in the racing field tomorrow afternoon, going into tomorrow evening. The fast time, 16.590 is a speed of 108 miles an hour, and that again was set by Scott Bloomquist. Next up, it's day two, the day of the big 19th annual World's 100. It's race day, 1989, here at Eldora Speedway. And again, the fans come from 30 to 35 states each year to take part in this spectacular event and to see the finest dirt track late model racing anywhere to be found. Yes, other tracks have tried to copy the successful format developed in 1971 by Earl Baldus. They've even paid more money, but they can't get more cars. They can't get better cars. They can't make their late model race even close to the World's 100. Here's your past winners. 1971, it was Bruce Gould. He was from Ohio. In 1972, it was Volan Eakers out of Iowa. In 73, it was Floyd Gilbert that picked up the victory, again from Ohio. In 1974, it was Ed Sanger out of Iowa. In 1975, Joe Merrifield was the winner from Iowa. 76, it was Charles Hughes from Georgia. In 77, Doug Kinema from Georgia picked up the victory. Ken Walton from Iowa was the winner in 1978. And Larry Moore picked up the win in 1979 from Ohio. Then it was Charlie Schwartz in 1980. Larry Moore, the first two-time winner in 1981. In 1982, Mike Duvall from South Carolina. 83, it was Jeff Purvis from Tennessee. 84, Purvis came back and did it back-to-back. -back, a second win, first time for that feat. And then 85, Larry Moore was the first three-time winner. In 1986, Jeff Purvis picked up his third win. 87 was Randy Boggs, and 1988 was Scott Bloomquist. The only multiple winners, Larry Moore and Jeff Purvis, both have three victories, and they're both here this weekend to compete, trying for number four. Here's a breakdown of the state with the most victories. Ohio's drivers have got six wins, Iowa four, Tennessee four, Georgia two, South Carolina one, and Kentucky one. And now let's turn it over to Terry Baldus as he does some in-depth interviews with some of the top drivers. You walk down through the pitch, you see his name plastered on almost every race car. None other than Carl C.J. Rayburn. Welcome back to the World's 100, C.J. Thank you, Terry. Uh, we're glad to be here. How'd you pick up the nickname C.J. rather than calling yourself Carl? Uh, my parents done that. I didn't have anything to do with it. They called you C.J. ever since you were a little boy? Yep, it's always been C.J. CJ, do you enjoy driving a race car? Well, not all the time, but sometimes I enjoy driving it. I, I was just uh, talking to the guys back there. I'd much rather be doing what Ray Gotzi's doing with a good driver and maintain stuff and a, a guy that can go out and do, its best, do his best job driving. I can do my best job what I do the best, and driving's not it. What is your specialty? Well, we like to, you know, maintaining the race car and coming up with new setups. And it's hard, you know, they say it's hard to play a guitar and sing. CJ, if you could have your choice of any race car driver in the country, who would you put in your car? Well, the best race car drivers in the world are here today. They're not at Darlington or Daytona or in Annapolis. They're right here today. And they're all like maybe kids you got to have their head on right and it's whoever whichever one's got their head on the best is one that i'd rather have then and they're all good if, if they're given time they're all good when it's larry moore's day nobody's going to beat him when it's freddie smith's day nobody's going to beat him when it's john gill's day nobody's going to beat him cj you build these race cars and you sell the cars to these guys and then you turn around and you go out and you race with them do you ever get into a problem there? Yeah, I race probably at the biggest disadvantage of anybody. Uh, I, I really don't like to pass my cars. I don't. I like to take their money at the shop. I don't like to follow them around the racetrack and, and take it then. Uh, if I think one of my cars can win the race, I'll be trying some, a different setup back in the back of the pack somewhere, trying something different. There's a mental block there for me, and I just I do have a hard time passing my people. Who do you think is going to win the World's 100? Well, I don't know. There's, oh my goodness, 
There's a lot of them out there that could win it. There'll be a lot of people that don't make the race that could win it. Uh, that would really be hard to say. I hope it's a Rayburn car. C.J. Rayburn, thanks for coming to the World's 100. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause? Next gentleman up here, he comes to the World's 100 every year. He's been close so many times, but he's never won it yet. The driver of the double zero, Freddie Smith. Freddie, welcome back to the World's 100. Thank you a lot. I'm glad to be here. Freddie, for a guy who only comes to Eldora once a year, you sure have a big fan club here. Well, uh, I'm just glad there are all of our fans there. and We try to do the best we can and uh, keep the car looking good, so they'd be proud of it. Are you this popular everywhere you go? Well, I don't know about everywhere we go, but uh, I think we are pretty much uh, where we go up north here, where we run, you know. We've got uh, certain tracks we got, like to go to, and uh, we'd like to be there. What is your impression of the world's 100? Well, everybody's impressed to win it. Uh, we'd like to win it. We've been there real close, and we run good, you know, just about every time we've been here, but uh, we just hadn't been lucky enough to win it. Is this your year, Freddie Smith? Well, I'd like to say, yeah, I, hope, I would like to uh, win it this week and, you know, go back home with this thing under a belt there. It'd be really nice. Ladies and gentlemen, next up has to be the pre-race favorite right now. He is the defending champion. He was the fastest qualifier out of 208 race cars last night. The car that he has on the pole is the car that he won with last year. Our defending champion, Scott Bloomquist. Welcome back to Eldora, Scott. Thank you, it's glad, I'm glad to be back. I've looked forward to coming back ever since last year. Never seen anything like this before and really glad to be a part of it. Scott, you came to the World's 100 last year. You had never raced here before. You never even saw the Speedway, but yet you had the right setup. Was it luck or are you that good? Uh, it's not anything to be that good. It's just a matter of you work all year on your race car and you, you learn what's fast at a lot of places and you apply that to different places that you go to. And usually what works on a similar surface, uh, you can travel other places and it'll work for you again. Is your chassis set up the same way you were last year? Uh, to the pound. Right to the pound. Do you write it down in the book? Yeah, we keep records on everything. How long have you been racing, Scott? This will be eight years this year. Is there any added pressure on you, being the champion? Yeah. Uh, I don't feel any. I just was glad to win the race last year. Uh, I feel actually more comfortable this year. Just last year we pulled in here and thought we'd really bit off more than we could chew. And now, you know, I've just, I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more at ease. I think that added a lot in setting fast time. I feel good on the racetrack and uh, I know a lot of the competitors a lot more since we've traveled a lot in the past year or two. So you know what you're up against. You seem to really be up for this race tonight. Yeah, I feel real good about it. I think uh, nothing goes wrong and we get into these, get through this first heat. Uh, it's going to be a little wet, and I just hope everything goes good in it so I can get the right car I want in the, heat, in the feature race tonight. How much difference does the driver's mental attitude make? I believe you've probably got quite a few guys here with a real good attitude. It's got to help. Uh, I feel like I have a good attitude and feel like it makes a lot of difference in all the races we run. You know, if you just Last year I did come here thinking that I'd just like to make the race and run good in the race. Once I made the race, my attitude changed a little bit. And I think this year, you know, we come just with in mind to win the race. And that's, I'd say there's a lot planning to do that and a lot that are happy just to make the race. So I think you can do what, you're, what you can see possible. Ladies and gentlemen, our defending champion of the World's 100, Scott Bloomquist. Thank you, Scott. The next gentleman, three-time winner, the World's 100. He was the first man to ever win it back-to-back, -back, none other than Jeff Purvis. Welcome back to the World's 100. Thanks. We're really, uh, we're really glad to be here. I, I top this hill every year and see all these campers and get really excited and 
It's just a real th treat to be here. Jeff, you have virtually won every major race in the country. How's come you're so good? <laughs> I don't really know that I am. I've got a lot of good equipment. I've got a lot of good people behind me. Uh, you're only as good as the help that you've got or the people around you. That's, that's always, I think in any case, any sport, you're, always as, you're only as good as your team. Um, I've had a lot of good people working with me through the years and, you know, we work hard. We don't, we don't sit around and we don't loaf, and, but we have our bad times too. You know, a lot of people see the good times, but there's a lot of them that remember the bad times. Jeff, your record here at the World's 100 is incredible. First year you came down, 1982, you ran second. In that race, you probably would have won it, but you had a hood come loose. They pulled you in the pits, corrected the hood, you came out, you had to start on the tail, and you still came back and finished second. The next year you came back, 1983, you won. You came back in 84, you won again. In 1985, you were second. 1986, you won again. 1987 was your worst finish ever. It was eighth. Last year, you finished second. Should we maybe rename this race the Jeff Purvis World 100? No, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't do that. This, this track has been good to me. This, when I come in here and look at this track, it doesn't look like a track that I would run good at. Every year I come here, I say that. It just, it, uh, it just, I don't know, it's big, it's fast, it's, got a lot of corners to it. I usually don't run good with a lot of corners, but the track's been pretty good to me. I, I don't, I've not even been back, and I'm, I'm really honest with this, I've never been back with the same setup twice. So, you know, I, through the year I struggle and try to find something that works pretty good for me, and then I bring whatever the best setup is that I've found through the year, you know, here. And, and uh, the car last night, the car that I had second fast time with really it really took the track good. When I got to the middle of the corner, I was mad at myself because I didn't drive the car as hard as what I thought it should. But I've been having a little bit of fuel problems and just a little bit of odds and ends that we've been working on ever since we've been here. And maybe we can get the car running pretty good when it comes race time. Well, Jeff, kind of a contrast in racing strategy. Scott Bloomquist was just up here. He says he has his car set up right to the nut the way he ran last year. You, on the other hand, come and say you change the setup every year. Well, I think, I think even earlier, okay, earlier we, when I came here, we ran the wedge cars and uh, with the sideboards, and that took a little bit different setup, and then each year it's changed a little bit. You know, he's come back twice with the, you know, the same body style, same pretty much everything. And it was fast for him last year. He ran good with it all year. He ran good through the year with it this year. And, you know, he's comfortable with that setup. Maybe we're just getting to the setup that he's, you know, been running a little bit with. Um, you know, we'd like I say, we've just, we've come with so many different, you know, we've been to Eldora a few times now and, and it's changed through the years. And I just think that the setup that I had last year, the one I've got this year is even a little bit better. So that's the reason I keep coming back with a different setup every year. Well, Jeff, you have a unique situation. You've got two race cars. You had second quick time. You could save that car, not have to run your heat, start in 20th spot. You also have a car in the fifth heat, which gives you the outside front row. What are you going to do? Well, it's... I'm going to take the first car and I'm going to run it as hard as I can. If I can get in the race with the first car, I'm going to take that. Um, the fifth heat that I'm in, the best thing to remember, there's some, there's some pretty good ones in front of you, which the second heat, there's some good ones in front of you. But uh, my, shot, my shot didn't really look good in the fifth heat. With, you know, there's a lot of, there's, I think there's a past winner of this World 100 a time or two in here with me. And uh, it's going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to make it through that right there, but if I don't make it with the first car, I'm going to come back and try it in the second car, and if, uh, if I have to, I'll take my, I think I've got a provisional start from a second fast time, and I'll take that. I'll take whatever shot I can to get in. Larry Moore's your hero. Why did you pick Larry Moore? Because he's sitting back here and he's a big mean son of a gun? No, I, I tell him every time I see him. Every time I walk through the pits, I tell him that. He won't listen to me. Maybe it's, 
Maybe it's I like his wife better than him or something. I don't know. He's, uh, Larry, uh, Larry's been good for the sport, I feel like. He's come back to Eldor year after year and run real good. And he, The first man to ever win the World 100 twice. He was the first man to ever win the World 100 three times. The incomparable Larry Moore. Welcome back to the World 100, Larry. Thank you. Glad to be here. Larry, do you really lie? He didn't say I lied, did he? I'll let the folks be the judge. I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, I try not to lie. <laughs> do, Charlie Schwartz says you do. Well, you might have thought I did, but probably find out later I wasn't lying. <laughs> he just didn't understand what you were saying. That's possible. Well, you've become the elder statesman of the group now. Really? Chick Hale's not here. <laughs> That's right. Larry, how's things look for you this year? Well, we had a little problems last night, and uh, but I think we'll be all right. Who are you most concerned about? Uh, probably uh, Scott Bloomquist and Jeff Purvis. Purvis been running real good the last few weeks. He struggled earlier in the year. Now he's going really good. Scott's awful fast. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, you have to remember the ra this racetrack is not always the same. So it's like the fastest car if they don't pick the proper tire. Maybe maybe it's even on the left front or we don't pick it on the right front. They may not win. Larry, what has it meant to you to be the first two-time winner in the first three-time winner of the World's 100? Well, when I won it the first time, you know, I'd raced here lots of times before I won it. I led the first race that you had here in 71 and and got wrecked, and, and it was quite a while before I won it, and, and it was the greatest race that I'd ever won. And it's and then when I won it, you know, the second and the third time, it was the same thing. It just got better. So I'd, I'd sure like to be the first one to win it four times, that's for sure. Of the three that you won, is there one that stands out more than the other? Well, probably the first time, you know, that's seems like always the hardest, but but then it's been four years since I won it, so it'd be it'd mean a lot to me to win it this year. Well, a lot for me. <laughs> Next up, second generation driver. He's teaching his son to drive, so we'll have a third generation driver here, he says, next year. <laughs> The 1980 World's 100, good time, Charlie Schwartz. Welcome back to the World's 100, Charlie. Thank you, Terry. I'm glad to be here. Charlie, how'd you get the nickname, Good Time? Well, Mr. J.W. Hunt named me that. I don't know why, because I've really never, you know, I don't usually have real good times, but once in a while, I guess J.W. seen me have a couple, so he named me Good Time. Kind of stuck with you for a while, didn't it? Yeah, you know, he, he you know, he can put a name on you and you, you keep it for a while. <laughs> Charlie, you won back in 1980. At that time, you were probably the hottest driver in the country in 1980. You had some good years right before that. You've had some good years since then. The last few years now, you've turned a lot of your attention toward building race cars. What kind of season are you having this year? Well, uh, I would say this year is the best season I've had for about four. Uh, you know, it had got to where it kind of looked like that I was a has-been and kind of began to wonder it myself, you know, but I just got on to some deals that I wasn't comfortable with last year and the year before. Uh, the people I was in with, you know, I really thought the world of them and still do. Our deal didn't click, you know, and we finally both came to realize that we weren't clicking, and so this year I'm back on my own more or less. In fact, you know, I'm running my kid's car right now, and we felt that, you know, that we would just go out and run a couple races this year and do what we could. And daggone, the little old car has been good to us, and we've won some races, and we decided to come here, and we're in decent shape here today, it seems like. Charlie, why isn't your son racing the World's 100? Well, if he'd have raced, I wouldn't have had anything to drive. <laughs> 
Hi, everybody. Jerry Klum of the Racing Review video here today at Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio, for the big day of racing, the 19th annual World's 100, the granddaddy of late model classics here at Eldora. Yeah, this is a great race, and I'm smiling because I'm ready for this racing action to get underway. We've got a record field of cars. 208 cars qualified last night in a rain-shortened qualification day. However, there were some great cars out there, some good fast times, and we're going to run down through and show you the highlights of the the qualifications and show you the top rundowns on the qualification times. But today it's race day, the, the day for the chance of this driver becoming part of history and winning this classic event. We have two previous three-time winners in this year's race, that being Jeff Purvis and Larry Moore, both those drivers trying to make their shot and become the first four-time winner. Everybody else has only won it once out of the last uh, 19 years, and there's a lot of the past winners also will be running in the heat race action. I say heat races, and really they're more like feature events here at Eldora Speedway, a 15-lap event with 20 cars inverting the top six up towards the front, and they have to race hard to qualify for the feature. The top three positions of each of these qualifying heat races will earn themselves a start in the 1989 World's 100. The balance of the field will have to work themselves through a last chance B-Main. We're down in the pits now, about ready to take a look at the driver's meeting held by Terry Baldus. Look over some of the cars, drivers, and equipment here for the running of the 19th 89 edition, the 19th annual World's 100. Terry Bonas conducts the driver meeting here at Eldora Speedway, and he gives a chance to talk to the drivers, explain the rules as we look again at the defending champion, Scott Bloomquist, Mooresburg, Tennessee. The fastest qualifier, he looks good for this year. He says he didn't change his setup. Everything's to the pound. Terry basically goes over the rules and regulations and talks about the the, the things to do and the things not to do for the World's 100, and you follow the rules here at Eldora Speedway or you don't run in any future World 100 events. The basic rules that we're covering here in reference to the qualifying end of these shows, the drivers have all qualified. Now the top 120 cars are going to be lined up in heat races, and the winner of the first heat race will be starting in the uh, on the pole position, excuse me, that's going to be starting in sixth position. They invert the six places where the second heat starts in fifth position, where the third heat starts in fourth, and right up down the line. If you finish second in the heat race, the first heat race you'll be starting, you know, in the back of the field there, behind that sixth place start. So every time you advance one position in the heat race, it's like moving up six spots in the feature. It makes exciting heat race action for the World's 100. And as we said before, these heats are more like features. An unusual format for a race, but a very successful one that has proved to make the racing the most exciting of any dirt track late model racing I've ever been able to see in all the dirt track shows we've covered around the country. A successful formula for a successful race, the World's 100. Down to the pits, we see the best late models and late model drivers in the nation. And some of the finest car builders are here, from Bullock Chassis to C.J. Rayburn's, Swartz New Chassis, Master Belts, many, many more racing chassis. <laughs> Jeff Purvis, he's won it three times before. Gary Struber from Maryland. And there's Randy Boggs, the 1987 winning car. And Donnie Moran, a bullet chassis powered by a Dramey engine. Donnie's been hot at Eldora this year. He's never won the World's 100. This may be his year. 120 cars it takes again to line up the races. Plus, there's some alternates out here for some of these guys that might not get started. And drivers are here from 25 states across the great nation. <laughs> All the sun's shining right now at Eldora Speedway. There is threatening weather in the, uh, the forecast for this evening. As the cars are coming back off the heats, they have to be weighed and measured here. Ump officials will be taking care of that. They must weigh in for a certain amount of weight and check their tire measurements. They have to pass all the rules again and regulations or they're out of the action. A full grandstands for the 1989 World's 100. <laughs> 
And these people are getting ready to watch the racing action start here at Eldora Speedway tonight as the trucks are now running in the, the track for the final time. Earl's got the track in nice, smooth condition after last night's qualifying, and the racing's about to get underway. The first of six, 15 lap, 20 car heat race features. Exciting, but also racing is a very dangerous sport. We ask at all times that you stay back away from the fence. It's been so many times that a wheel has come up into the fence, or even a car has come up into the fence. Stretch. You're going to have to decide where you want to be. Either you want to be in the pit, or you want to be outside of the pit. We're not going to allow you to continue to cross the track all night long. Get where you want to be, and stay put. It's coming up on that hour. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to go with the 1989 World 100, $25,000 to win tonight. This could be the greatest World 100 we have ever had. And now, before we begin tonight's racing program, we ask everyone to please stand for the plane of our national anthem. <laughs> It's Woodmore 66, Carrier 24X, Moyer 24X, Lawhorn C5, Francis 15X, Bloomquest the 18 car, a key in a 33X car, Health Region a 71, Randy Boggs in a 17, alongside brother Jack Boggs, the B4X car. And we had Vineyard 48, Massey 22, Seaburn 4S, Connolly 71, Horton 1H, Sheckle 98, Hobbs XJ4, McCammon 92, Bradley 1B, and Wing in a 55 car. The winner of the first heat race will be starting in sixth position. The top six cars are inverted. The top three cars move into the World's 100. The next four cars move into the B main. The lineup for your first of six, 15 lap, 20 car World 100 heats. Here comes the cars out on the track. The fans are ready for racing tonight. Terry explained the right line rule here at Eldora Speedway. That's where the race starts. The leaders get to that line before they stand hard on the gas. If you jump positions, you go to the tail. On the pole, it's Whittier. Then we have Eddie Carey of the 24X car. Alongside of him, it's Billy Moy of the 21X. Then with John Lawhorn, the C5. Steve Francis, the 15 car. Starting in six, fastest qualifier of the evening is Scott Bloomquist. There's the green flag. The World 100 is green for 1989. And into the lead, it's Eddie Carrier on the 24X car. We got a couple cars brushing the wall. That brings out a yellow flag. 
The sky is continuing to get darker here as the storm is definitely moving into the Eldora area. Everyone's holding their breath, wondering if they're going to be able to get this evening's racing event over with. It's a restart now, back up into the two abreast lineup, but the sky is continuing to darken and lightning bolts are flashing around the air. What a thrill up here in this 30-foot uh, boom van as the green flag comes back out, the race back underway. Into the lead, it's Eddie Carrier in the 24X car. Down the back stretch, running wheel to wheel with Carrier in the 66 car. That's Bill Whittingmore. Billy Moyer running in third position in that 21 car. As we said before, Moyer has one of the finest teams out there. He said he'd come to win the night. He feels ready. Scott Bloomquist gets hung up with Steve Francis, and Francis coming to a stop in turn two. Yellow flag again waving. As Steve Francis has stopped in a dangerous spot there on the back stretch. The rain's starting to come down. It's starting to rain here at Eldora Speedway. Two laps into the first heat race. On the track side of the wall. They park them just the way they are. Their line is perfect. Everybody hoped that we might be able to wait out this rain, but it didn't happen. The fans run for cover. The rain continued to get harder. And after several hours of delay, the 1989 World's 100 was postponed. And not just for a day, postponed for a month. The race could not be ran the next day. It was still too wet. Other big races were in the area for the next couple of weeks. Drivers had commitments to. So the race was rescheduled for one month from the day we tried to run it here today at Eldora. Hello again, race fans. Jerry Crum, the Race Review Video. We're back at Eldora Speedway. It's been almost a month now since the last time we tried to, uh, to get this race off. Earl Baldus and his uh, Eldora staff. And the race came, and it was a washout. But the sun's shining bright today. It's clear skies, predicted to be cold, but no rain tonight. So the 1989 edition, the 19th annual World's 100, so it should uh, take place. And, be a great race. We've got six complete heat races with the exception of two laps down in the first heat race. We'll be picking up on the action with the heat races, going through the entire summers of heat races and then go back to the B main and then the big 100 lap feature event. And this year's winning driver will be picking up $22,000. We're going down in the pits right now. We'll look over some of the cars, maybe get a chance to talk to some of the drivers here today as the cars, drivers, and fans, and fans are still filing in here at Eldora Speedway for the 1989 edition, the 19th annual World's 100. 120 cars are back here at this racetrack. Over actually 135 cars return. So we've got some alternates. Good turnout of cars, considering it was almost a month. And we're walking down through the pits now to see some of these drivers that came back to run again today for the big World's 100. Here's Charlie Schwartz. The 1989 World's 100. It's been about, uh, well, let's see, 1980, about nine years since you set the victory circle. Feel about this year's race? Well, I'm feeling real good about it. You know, I'm not saying that I didn't feel a little better about it a month ago. At the, you know, when we got rained out, I was really pumped up at the time and felt great. But I feel like our chances are really good right now. So I'm feeling real good about it. Well, good luck to you, Charlie, and uh, thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Jerry. Charlie Schwartz won it in 1980, and here's that Moyer rig we talked about, a fantastic Freightliner truck and trailer, and what a rig. Here's Billy Moyer. You got one of the sharpest teams down here. Could you tell us a little bit about your team owner and, and your team sponsor? Well, I, I got quite a few people that helped me out. We got some help from a lot of the manufacturers on parts on the car, and uh, the main people that helped me, uh, you know, money-wise on our rig is my dad is one of the biggest supporters in in me and uh, Larry Shaw and Bill Day, uh, Waters Autoland with, is my uncle and he helps us out. We just, it's a big team effort. You know, the guys that helped me on the car, I got two or three guys that helped me on the car and you know, they work their heart out on it. And 
you know, they just try and uh, do the best job they can do on getting the car ready, and I try and do the best job I can do as far as driving the thing, and, you know, we've had a had a good year, and uh, i just like to thank all the people that's helped me, because, you know, you can't do it by yourself. They, uh, you know, I can't say enough about the people that's helped me out. I just, my dad and my uncle and Bill Day and, you know, the Shaver Engines out there, just everybody's been super, and, uh, you know, the last couple years have, have been really good for us, so we're just trying to keep it up. About this year's World 100, I know you'd run well here at Eldora in the past during some four crowns and other events you've won down here. What about your chances for this year's World's 100? Do you feel good about possibly a win today? Well, I do. I uh, Last time we come here, and I didn't feel like we was really prepared. We had, we had problems with an engine right off the bat. We didn't really have a real good backup engine to put in, and uh, we went ahead and put it in. The car would seem to be running pretty good in the heat, but, you know, we'd, I'd, we ran the week before, three or four nights in a row before we come here, and we got here, and we was already wore out before the weekend started, and you can't come here like that. And, uh, you know, I just feel a lot better about it this time. We didn't, we ran two races last weekend and laid off Sunday and just started getting stuff ready and and uh, changed a few little things on the car since last time I was here. I think we picked up a little bit, and uh, I feel like we're really ready today, I, you know, more than I've ever been right here, I think. Jerry Ball is back on the PA, telling everybody to uh, to go racing. And we're going to be starting this race up with just the cars that came back for this race. No alternates will be put in this heat race since the, uh, the the race had already got underway. The heat winners take up the first sixth position. We do in Burkdale, so the winner of the first heat starts in sixth spot. The winner of the sixth heat will start on the pole. Then all the second place guys go in according to their finish. The second place finisher in that first heat starts in seventh position. All the second place guys, then followed by the third place guys. This is a racer's race. A racer's race. Uh, two words were never spoken. Just making this world's 100 is quite a feat. You can ask any driver that's ever got behind the wheel and tried to do it here at Eldora Speedway. Here's your lineup for the uh, restart. Whitty Moore's on the pole. Then we have Eddie Carrier, 24X. Billy Moyer in the 21 car. John Lawhorn, C5. Steve Francis, the 15X car. And we have Scott Bloomquest, the 18 car, starting in sixth position. Jeff Aki in the 33 car. He's a rookie here, starting seventh. Dalmas Conley starts eighth in the 71 car, followed by Randy Boggs in the 17. Jack Boggs in the B4 car. Then we have H.E. Vineyard in the 48. Stan Massey starts 12th in the 22 car, followed by Don Seaburn in the 4S car. In 14th position, it's Don, Tom Helfridge in the 71H car. Then we have Marty Horton starting 15th in the 1H car. Eddie Schickel 16th in the 98 car, followed by Roger Wing and Jim Schwank. 12 laps remain, and the top three cars move to their World's 100. The next four go into a B main. The green flag about to come out on the restart here at Eldora Speedway, and we're going to go racing once again. Green flag waving. Billy Moyer down along the backstretch makes his move and into the lead. He goes ahead of Eddie Carrier. Billy Moyer, your race leader. Bloomquest moves into second position in the 18 car. Eddie Carrier running in third position. Remember, those top three spots are the ones that transfer to the, the big race. 1987 winner Randy Boggs, he's having troubles as he's now back running in sixth position. Bloomquest starting to make his move over around Moyer. Side by side, they go through turn two. Two of the fastest cars here this year, Billy Moyer and Scott Bloomquest. Remember a month ago, Bloomquest had the fast qualifying time but it could be a whole different ball game after 30 days to prepare. They're stretching out their lead. They now have a quarter lap lead over the balance of the field. These two drives are outclassing the balance of this field, and we've got some great racers in this race. Steve Francis, the 15 car. In the 66 car, that's Dill Whittingmore. 
as it's still Billy Moyer out in front. He said he thought he was ready to race. It looks like he's ready today as he's pulling that lead now ahead of Scott Bloomquist. And they're coming up on the lap traffic already in this 15 lap heat racing now. The five car smoking, he pulls in. That was John Lawhorn pulling in there with smoke coming out of his car. Bloomquist and Moyer working themselves around the lap cars. Two laps remain in this first heat race of the evening. Billy Moyer doing a fantastic job. He's working the track, the bottom or the top of the track. His car works equally well on either end of the track tonight as the white flag waves and one lap remains. Trying to put a lap on the 48 car of H.E. Vineyard, who is now running in eighth position. Moyer comes down and picks up a checkered flag and the victory in the first qualifying heat race of the evening. Billy Moyer, your winner. In second position, it was Scott Boonquest in the 18X car. And third place went to Eddie Carrier. Carrier in the 24 car. Those top three cars have now earned themselves a start in the 1989 World's 100. The next four car, Randy Boggs, Jack Boggs, Dumas Conley, and Steve Francis, they'll work themselves through the B-Main. Next up, it's the second 15 lap heat race event. And here's your lineup setting on the pole. It's John Gill in the 1K Ray Gutsy car. Outside of him is Charlie Swartz in the two car. Then we have Steinhaus, 21. Purvis in the 15 car. Francis, 15F. Then we have Earsock, 44. Knowles, 66. Gundacker, 11. Petro, 27. Lanigan, 29. Roy Sheets in the 11 car. Lakeham, the 28. Anderson, M1. Asbury 96, Walters N1 English 96, Dean in the V2 car and Napper as they're picking up their speed now coming down through the third turn heading for that white line. John Gill and Charlie Swartz are both uh, driving borrowed cars. Gill driving for Ray Godsey and Swartz driving for his son Adi Swartz. And into the lead it's Charlie Swartz. We got trouble down at turn three. They're sideways. They're, they keep it moving, but the yellow flag does come out. No start. There'll be a complete restart here. Starter looks them over. The green flag waves once again. The race back underway. And again, it's John Gill and Swartz side by side going into the number one turn. Three abreast down the back stretch, and Charlie Swartz into the lead. Jeff Purvis has made his move into second position. Purvis in that Phoenix Auto car. Remembering he's uh, one of the only two three-time winners in this year's race. And he's always good at Eldora Speedway. Charlie Swartz, he's a veteran of this track, been here for many years. He's out in front setting the pace. Great racing back in the back of the pack as these drivers try to advance towards the front. Again, keep in mind, only the top three spots will be moving into the World's 100. The next four spots have to battle themselves through a last chance race. It's a long ways up from the B main to get into the back of the World's 100. Purvis is slowing down. Jeff Purvis, the three-time winner of this race, is out. And also Feldner in the 101 car is blowing smoke, and he comes to a stop. Jeff Purvis is out of the first heat race. He'll have one more opportunity. He's in another heat race with a backup car. And he does have one of the provisional starts, being one of the top two fastest qualifiers. If Jeff does not make it through the heat races, he will be able to start 19th in the feature. I think he was involved in that little tangle there and uh, at the start of the race and 
little wrap in the rear end. He may have some troubles with his rear end. He's checking things over. But Purvis is definitely out of this first heat race. Four laps down, 11 laps remain as Charlie Schwartz is out in front. The green flag back out on the restart. It's Schwartz back into the lead. Down the back stretch, it's Charlie Schwartz in the two car and Gibby Steinhaus in the 21 car running side by side. In the 44 car, that's Robert Irsock. He's in third position, followed by Steve Francis. In the 27 car is Russ Petro. Still battling back and forth for that number one spot. It's Charlie Schwartz and Gibby Steinhaus. Schwartz driving his son's car, a car he built himself, uh, Charlie Schwartz, Schwartz race cars. There's the white flag, one lap remains, and Charlie will be in this year's World's 100, starting in sixth position. Good time, Charlie Schwartz. As I was saying, driving his son Adi's car on an engine that he built in 1984. There's the checkered flag, and the race winner was Charlie Schwartz. Charlie now calls home Kentucky, originally an Ohio driver, now out of Kentucky. Steve Francis, John Gill, Russ Petro, and Kevin Gundecker will work themselves to the B main as the top three go to the World 100. The next four go to the B main. Up down to the field, either go home or get their backup cars out if they're in another heat race. Here's the lineup for the third heat race. It's Jack Hewitt on the pole in the 21 car. Then we have Pierce, 32J, Lawhorn in the two car, Williams, 19, Rhodes, 68, Moran, 99, and there, Rodak in the three car, Bowersock in the 18 car, Conley in the 71X car, Shepard, he's a sprint car driver in the four car, then Charlie Seven in the 99 car, Gary Stuhler in the 44, Greg Lease in the 51 car, Rudak in the three car, Barnett in the 89X car, Hobbs J4, Roberts 09, Monts 81, Chowders 1X, and Greg 42. We have just found out that Jack Hewitt has not got to the track yet. He's on the pool of this race. He's running a sprint car race in New York, and he's flying in here, but has, uh, yet has not got to the racetrack. So it looks like Jack Hewitt's going to be missing his spot. He's coming across the track in the backstretch. Jack Hewitt is running across the track. His heat race is on the track. Hewitt driving a sprint car race, a World of Outlaw show at Syracuse, New York, a race which he did finish fourth in race that ran in the afternoon flew into uh, from New York to Eldora. He's now in his car. He arrived late, but he will be penalized and will have to start from the back of the field. Driving the car owned by J.W. Hunt, Hunt Produce, car number 21. C.J. Rayburn chassis. Pace setters, uh, Jack Hewitt will now drop back to the tail, and uh, that changes your lineup in the front row. Pace car will be pulling off the track this time around. Getting these drivers underway, the third heat race. The 
fast qualifier in this race is Donnie Moran, the 99 car. As Jack Hewitt drops to the tail. A long way to the front for Jack Hewitt. He hopes to finish in the top three. John Lawhorn now on the pole in the two car. Bob Pierce outside the front row to 32. Then we have John Williams, John Rhodes, John Roddick, and Donnie Moran, the third fastest qualifier of the night. They pick up their tempo, the white line, the green flag, the 30 races underway. You are trying to move up fast from the back. In the lead, it's Bob Pierce, the 32 car, followed by Lawhorn, and Donnie Moran moved into third. Into the wall, it's Jim Klein. Klein wraps that wall hard. That brings out a yellow flag. That'll mean a restart. A complete restart. All the cars back to two abreast formation. Again, John Lawhorn on the pole at 32J. It's Bob Pierce. He'll be starting on the outside of the front row. And on the pole, outside of Hill, it's Pierce in 32. They bring him around. Coming down for the white line, the green flag weighs, and again, the 30 races back underway. In the lead, it's Pierce in the 32 car. You take that outside front row position into the lead. They say that's the best spot to start. A race at Eldora Speedway is on the outside of that front row. As Jack Hewitt back in the back, trying desperately to move up on the competition. Hewitt dropping back. He seems to be slowing down. He got here late, had a late attempt on this race, and I think his timing is quite a bit off. The pressure of starting at the back of the race when he would have been starting on the pole if he'd just been here 10 minutes earlier. Bob Pierce sets the pace in the 32 car. And Donnie Moran continues to move up in that 99 car. And Hewitt has spun and down the straightaway. Jack Hewitt must have made some contact coming out of the fourth turn. His car has spun around. There's the restart. Hewitt now back again to the tail. The green flag waves. The race back underway. And Pierce again sets the pace. Johnny Williams, the 19 car, running in second. And Donnie Moran running in third, putting the pressure on the leaders. Moran drops to the bottom. A bullet chassis powered by a dreamy engine. Donnie makes contact with Williams down the straightaway. No damage seems to have happened to his car, though. He's still running strong as it's a three-way race for the lead. Now Moran tries high on the outside. He makes a move into second spot, and we got contact in the wall. Delmas Conley's got together another car. Some heavy damage in the back of Conley's car. That brought out another restart with 10 laps remaining in this 15-lap heat race. The green flag back out the race again, back underway. Jim Riddick in the three car, a little contact there in turn four. And Jerry Barsock is spun down in turn one as Moran jumps into the lead. A lead that will be relinquished as we'll go back to the last completed lap. And it'll put Donnie Moran back behind Bob Pierce. Jerry Barsock out of Walpock, Ohio. Made the break from the stock cars into the late models this year, but looking real good. Good team. As the green flag again weighs on this restart. Five laps remain. Bob Pierce, your leader. Williams running in second position. Donnie Moran running in third. And Hewitt again spins in the straightaway. His car is getting destroyed. Jack Hewitt having all kinds of trouble. I believe he's headed for the pits. It's Bob Pierce, your leader. Johnny Williams running in second. Don Moran running a very close third, followed by John Rhodes, Don Hobbs, and Gary Stuhler in the 44 car. It's a three-way race for the lead now as Williams try to make his move on Pierce and Moran try to make his move on Williams. Side by side through turn two. It's Williams and Pierce down the backstretch. Here comes Donnie Moran.
Moran again back in the second position. He's got his momentum now. That bullet chassis is flying. Moran makes his move and dives below Pierce and into the lead. Donnie Moran drove that like a sprint car through there as he slingshotted around Pierce and really took off into the lead. Your race leader is Donnie Moran. Bob Pierce running in second. John Williams running in third, followed by John Rhodes, Don Hobbs, Gary Stuhler, and Terry Shepard presently running in seventh position. Again, keep in mind, over the top three spots, move on to the feature, and they're automatically guaranteed $1,000 for starting in the World's 100. As Donnie Moran comes down with one lap remaining, he'll be picking up the white flag this time around. One more lap for Donnie Moran. Crazy Burg, Ohio. Down around the Columbus area as he picks up a win in the 30 race. Following Donnie at the flag was Bob Pierce in the 32 car. Second place went to, third place went to Johnny Williams in the 19 car. Those three now in the world's 100. The next four cars in the B was John Rhodes, Don Hobbs, Gary Stuhler, and Terry Shepard. Here's your lineup for the fourth heat race on the pole. It's Bobby Carnes in the B1 car. Jeff Aki in the 33 car is outside front row. He's a rookie, first time here at Eldora Speedway. Then we have Freddie Smith. He's been here for nine races in a row, the double zero car. Outside of that, C.J. Raber in the one car. Then we have Franklin 33, Jack Boggs the B4 car, Mike Balzano in the E1 car, Mark Bunnell in the 30 car. Then it's Bob Hill, the JV1 car, Noah Witcher 1W, Craig Lee's 51X, Ben Sickle in the seven car, Barnett 89, Weaver 12, Chris Graceler in the 88 car, General Holt the 1H, Kennedy in the seven up car, Kinsman 25, Walker and Bland round out the field. And again, the top three into the world's 100. Bobby Carnes to be one car, he'll be setting the pace. Jeff Aki, Freddie Smith, the double zero car, starts third. Fifth place, it's Rodney Franklin in the 33 car. And starting in sixth position, it's the fastest qualifier of this race, Jack Boggs. He had fourth quick time for the night. C.J. Rayburn, he's proved himself to be not only a great builder, but a good race driver. Very competitive in late models. Coming down for the white line, the green flag waves. The fourth heat race is underway. Yellow flag, we got a pile up right at the start of the race. Several cars are spinning. That's a Weaver there in the 12 car. That brings out a complete restart. Once again, they get lined up to abreast. 10 rows deep, 20 cars coming down for the green flag. The flag waves the race again back underway and into the lead. It's Jeff McKee in the 33 car, the rookie at Eldora Speedway. Could this be another year for a rookie at Eldora? Well, McKee looks good as he moves into the lead through the first turn. Bobby Carnes in second position, the 33 car. C.J. Rayburn running third, followed by Freddie Smith in the double zero car. The track seems to be getting a little slippery. The cars are all over the place. We've had a lot of racing on it this afternoon and this evening, and a lot more to come before this big 100 lap event gets underway. 50 miles around Eldora Speedway for a $25,000 prize. That's the second highest all time purse paid out to a late model at Eldora Speedway. We paid $25,000 a few years ago as Mark Bunnell bangs the wall. Let's watch a replay of that as he really. Nicks that wall and throws the fire off the tail. 
Good job of driving, and he keeps it under control for Mark Pennell. In 1982, Mike DeVoe picked up a $15,000 victory and got a $10,000 bonus from J.W. Hunt, and that was the only other time that $25,000 has been paid out to a late model until tonight here at Eldora Speedway. Bobby Carnes still running in second, C.J. Abram running third, followed by Freddie Smith, and Jack Boggs is up in fifth position. This Jeff Akee doing a great job of driving as Jeff Bland smoking very badly, and he's heading now for the pits as he slows down the backstretch. Lost his engine, and he's heading for the pits as Jeff Akee stands on the gas and moves out away from the field in this fourth heat race. We got another car spinning. That's E1 Balzano as he gets tapped there in the rear and does a 360. He keeps it gone, but it looks like he's got some damage to the front of that car. The track is clear. The race again restarted with Jeff Key out in front setting the pace. Rodney Franklin doing a good job of moving up in a 33 car. Good racing back in the back, but out in front it's Jeff Key. He jumped in the lead early on in this race and has been, been doing a fantastic job of moving up on the lap cars and holding back the Chargers. There's the checkered flag as Jeff Key has won the fourth heat race of the evening. Finishing second was C.J. Rayburn as he made his move around Freddie Smith. Smith finished third in the double zero car, and then top three now into the feature. How about a nice round of watch winner in car number 33, Jeff Mikey. Coming in second in car number one, C.J. Rayburn. Coming in third in car number double zero, Freddie Smith. Those three now advance in the world 100. Coming in fourth in car number 33, then we have Bob Hill, Mark Bunnell, and John Holt. They move on into the B main and the balance of the field again. And I said we got a backup car, they're out of luck. Next up is the 50 race. Then we have Doug All in the pole, Stuller on the outside of the front row. Larry Moore, a three time winner in the 14 car, starts in inside of row two. Willie Craft in the 83 car. Jim Curry actually starting in fifth position in the seven car. And Jeff Purvis in the 15 car. Bobby James, 44. Rivets, Walters, Harris, Johnson. Rice in the 44 car. Bekele, 59. Johns. Right on down the line, the starting field for the 50 race. And the winner of this race will be starting on the outside of the front row, the coveted place to start the World 100. On the pole, it's Doug Ott outside front row, Gary Stuhler in the 44X car. Three-time winner, Larry Moore. He won it in 79, 81, and 85. They're picking up their speed, coming down for the white line. And the 50 race is underway. Four abreast to turn one. Larry Moore makes his move into third spot. Willie Kraft in the 83 car moves into the lead. Gary Stuhler running in second, and Jeff Purvis running in third position. Now Purvis alongside of Stuhler down the straightaway. 
Green racing up to the front of the pack. Willie Graff stretches his lead, six car lengths down the back stretch. We've got Andy Parsfield, the 34 car. He's slowing down, and that brings out a yellow flag. Willie Graff doing a great job moving out in front. Coming up fast, it's Gary Stuhler and Jeff Purvis. The green flag back out, the race back underway. Purvis side by side with Gary Stuhler down the straightaway. He's trying to make that move back into second spot. The race leader's Willie Kraft. Stuhler still holding on for second, followed by Purvis running third. Larry Moore in fourth position. Two three-time winners. There they are, folks. The two guys that won this race three times each. The 15 car Purvis. And right behind him, Larry Moore. Moore struggling to be able to qualify into this year's race in that 14 car. Now the last nine years of racing, you're looking at the winners. Six of those nine years right there. Gary Moore and Jeff Purvis as they try to make those moves and get around Gary Stuhler in the 44 car. Out in front though, it's Willie Graff, that Minnesota driver. He's got this race in control as he's several car lengths ahead of the second position. Graff now moving up on some of the slower traffic. They're beginning to lap the field now as we get into the halfway point in this 15 lap race. The track is fast tonight. These guys are running laps in that 17 second bracket almost as fast as they qualify. The track is in excellent condition. Moore and Purvis bang each other there in turn one. Say Moore dropped back several positions as Willie Kraft continues to pick off these slower cars. The pace setter and race leader, it's Willie Kraft. We got another car spinning. He's come to rest down here in turn number four. That's the 38 car of Bob Walters. That brings out a yellow flag for Bob Walters. Bob is sitting in a very dangerous spot as the 98 car, 99 car, that's Jeff Hauser. He's pulling the pits. Hauser out of the race. Eight laps down, we're halfway through, eight laps down. On the restart, it'll be Willie Kraft, Gary Stuhler, Jeff Purvis, Larry Moore. Johnny Johnson in fifth position in 99 car. They pick up their speed down the back stretch. They're coming for the white line. The green flag waves. This restart back underway. And Stuhler slowing down as Jeff Purvis has made his move into second spot. Purvis caught Stuhler sleeping and made his move into second. And stretching out his lead. It's Willie Kraft in that 83 car. He's pulling away from the field. Jeff Purvis second, Gary Stewart in the third spot, 44 car. Larry Moore running in fourth, and now being overtaken by Johnson. Moore seems to be having some trouble. Johnson batting with him for that fourth position. Lakeville, Minnesota, the hometown of Willie Kraft, the 83 car. We've got a car Hitting the wall there in turn number one. That's Jerry Rice, the Stinger Ford Racing number 44. He brings out a yellow flag. Again, regrouping the field. A lot of drivers are using these new fiber wheels. They're lighter weight, less expensive. They break apart instead of the rear end when you contact the wall. Graff again brings him down for the restart. The green flag waves. The race back underway. Purvis right on his bumper looking for a mistake. He 
keep in mind that the winner of this race will be starting on the outside of the front row in the feature event. If you finish second in this race, you'll be starting 11th in the feature, all the way from the outside of the front row to 11th spot just for one position. So you see why they're driving hard tonight to try to win these qualifying heat race events. 31 car, Dennis May seems to be slowing down, down the straightaway. As Willie Kraft still holding back the efforts of Jeff Purvis. There's the white flag, one lap remains. Willie Kraft holding on to that lead. Jeff Purvis running in second, Gary Stuhler running in third. Those three will be qualified as they come down for the checkered flag. The race winner is Willie Kraft. He starts outside of the front row. The Lakeville, Minnesota driver has picked up the fifth heat race victory. In second position, it was Jeff Purvis followed by Gary Stuhler. Those three now move into the feature. It was announced afterwards that Jeff Purvis's car went through the scales and weighed in light. Jeff Purvis's car was penalized. He was disqualified from this heat race. Jeff Purvis now will not be starting on the uh, 11th position. He will go into his, per, his other start that he already has guaranteed, his uh, provisional start, which puts him in 19th position. Jeff Purvis disqualified for being too light at the weigh-in after this heat race. Next up, we have the lineup for the sixth and final heat race. The winner of this race will be starting on the pole. We have Chris Patterson on the pole. This race will be outside front row. It's ranks 30. We have Randy Boggs, the 17X car. Wade Knowles, 66. Johnson, 93. John Gill, K1. Then we have Crayer, B12. Schaefer, the 20 car. Meadows, 33. DeLong, the 3 car. Green, 3D. Rodezano in the 7 car. Flynn, 02. Land in the 12 car, Rudick in the 32, Rinaldi 77, Staples, and Moore, Dennis Moore in the 14 car. This is the final heat race. Three more cars in the feature, four more cars into the B main. As Patterson sets on the pole, followed by Tom Rentz, Randy Boggs, and Anthony 71. Then we have Wade Knowles in fourth, Jay Johnson, and John Gill as the green flag comes out on the 6th heat race. Chris Patterson makes his move out into the lead in the OP car, your race leader. Randy Boggs is running in second spot. I think we had a car stopped in the back stretch. I don't think the flyman can see that one. A battle for second now between the K1 car of John Gill and Randy Boggs. And Tom Rents in the three car right in that battle as well. Four cars running very close together up in the front of the pack. John Gill driving the Ray Gotze uh, K1 car, battling with Patterson, Rents, and Boggs. Four cars for the lead. Great racing tonight at Eldora Speedway. Into the lead, it's K1. John Gill has picked up the lead. Chris Patterson in second. Randy Boggs running in third, now being a challenger between him and the three car, and Rents trying to make his move into third spot. And Randy Boggs is spinning. Boggs battling with Rents spun completely around 360. Several cars got into him, but Randy Boggs continues to move. He did not stop. Watch this replay. Randy Boggs actually spun around. They didn't throw the yellow at that time. It was when the other cars started piling into him. And then they spun, the yellow flag came out. So as an interpretation of the rules, Randy Boggs will not be penalized. He was not the reason for the yellow. He will be able to maintain his spot. How they brought all the cars in for a stop. The lineup was so mixed up, they had to go down on the track and talk to these guys and explain to them where they'd be restarting the race. 
But what a break for Randy Boggs. He's got some sheet metal bed on his car. He's heading down for the pits to do some work on the car. The red flag is out. That's allowed. Hopefully they'll probably pull a fender out of his tire or something, but they are working on Randy Boggs' car down at the end of the, the pit entrance, the pit exit. Still a lucky break for Randy Boggs, your 1987 World's 100 winner. On the floor of the World's 100, we take the seat winners, they burn the first six spots and we flip them. The winner of the six seats on the pole, winner of the 15th outside, and it's starting to Again, the race lined back up, the green flag on the restart, and John Gill brings him down. As Chris Patterson gets sideways down the straightaway, a little contact there, Patterson had it completely sideways, but saved it. Randy Boggs running in fourth position. And right on his bumper, it's a 93 car of Jay Johnson. Your race leader, John Gill, the 1K car, subbing for Ray Gotze. Gotze was injured a few months ago. He's recovering from an accident. And John Gill will be driving his car tonight. Johnson makes his move around Randy Boggs. Johnson has moved into fourth position. Boggs falls back to fifth. Stretching his lead, it's John Gill, the 1K car. Running in second, it's Tom Rentz in the three car. Chris Patterson, the OP car, seems to be having some trouble. The halfway mark, Patterson is slowing down. As Gill goes high down the backstretch, overtaking one of the slower cars and drops down below him. Chris Patterson still running in third, but closing in very fast on him is Jay Johnson, as Patterson seems to be closing, slowing down, and Johnson seems to be getting faster. The battle of the 12 cars there at the back of the pack, Jerry Crayer and Jeff Bland. Also Kevin Weaver, we've got three 12 cars at this event. Another spin, Tim Green and Mario Rinaldi spun out in turn four. That brings out a yellow flag. Green's car, Troy Green's his name. That car was tore up pretty badly there on the, the right side. Both cars are out of the race as they retire to the pits. The track is cleared. Five laps remain on the restart. It's John Gill, your leader. Rince running second. Patterson running third, followed by Jay Johnson. And Randy Boggs still having trouble back there getting around some of the slower cars. still running in fifth position. Wade Knowles almost completely sideways the fourth turn. He keeps it gone though. He recovered that spin. As John Gill, the Ray Gotze, green and white, number K1, comes down and picks up the white flag. Jay Johnson's making his move around Chris Patterson. Johnson has moved in the third spot as he overtakes Patterson. It's John Gill riding turn four, coming in for a checkered flag as he picks up a victory, driving for Ray Gotze, the 60 race event. And that puts him on the pole for the 1989 World's 100. Finishing second was Tom Rentz. Jay Johnson was third. Chris Patterson finished fourth. And Randy Boggs, out of the A name, finished the fifth spot, will have to work himself for a B. Coming in third, in 
Farmer 93, Jay Johnson. Those three now advance into the World 100. Next up will be the 15 lap B main event, known as the last chance event. Four cars will be advancing from the B main into the feature event. The last chance to make the 1989 World's 100. Sitting on the pole, that 15 lap B main event is going to be the 1987 winner, Randy Boggs. Outside front row, it's Steve Francis, the 15 car. Then we have John Rhodes, 68, Franklin, 33, Johnson, 99, Patterson, OP, Hobbs in the J4 car, Bob Will, JD1. Then we have Larry Moore in the 14 car. Thomas Conley, 71, Russ Pato, 27, Mark Bunnell, 30 car, Bubba James, 44J, Rosano, 37, Gun Vector, 11, G car, Shepard, Holt, Johnson, Schaefer, Lucas, Kinna, Vineyard, Clayton, and Roberts round out the top field of cars. 24 cars will be starting this 15 lap beaming event and only the top four cars advance to the feature. The balance of the field will have no more shots. This is the last chance. They start to pick up their tempo now, heading down for the white line. The green flag weighs on the B main. The last chance is underway. Larry Moore, three-time winner of the World's 100, now battling to stay alive, battling just to make the race as the winner of the race will be starting in 20th position in the World's 100. Right now, that's Randy Boggs out in front, running in first position. Steve Francis in second in the 15 car. We've got a spin. He kept her gone, a 360 and kept her gone. The yellow flag did not come out. The race remains green. They're laying down a lot of rubber on the track tonight. You can see the black groove down the middle of the track. These cars running those wide racing tires now, laying a lot of that rubber down in the Eldora clay as Larry Moore struggling with John Rhodes, uh, who is running in sixth position. Moore trying to make his move up. Again, the top four spots advance to the feature. The balance are out of the race, and Larry Moore is having trouble moving towards the front of the field. It's Randy Boggs out in front. He's having no problem out there in front, holding a good lead on the second place car, 15, Steve Francis. Jay Johnson has moved in a third spot in the 99 car. Johnson makes his move in the third spot. Don Hobbs running in fourth position. As Larry Moore continues to drop to the back, being overtaken now by Chris Patterson, Moore has faded into ninth position. 217s in the same race, identical twin cars. You're not seeing double. What you're seeing is race leader Randy Boggs as he's putting a lap on his backup car. That's Rich Lucas driving the backup car for Randy Boggs. Rich started on the tail of the race, hoping to uh, have a shot at getting two of Randy's cars in the 1989 World's 100. Steve Francis still running second as he puts a lap on Lucas. And Johnson moving up very fast towards the front. Johnny Johnson in that 99 car as he's keeping the pressure on the 15 car of Francis. But Larry Moore still having his problem as he's battling back in the back in ninth and tenth position. Racing Kentucky, the hometown for Randy Boggs, as he makes a move around another lap car. He picks up the checkered flag and the victory for the last chance 15 lap B main. Randy Boggs at four best across the checkered flag. Rounding out the top four, making the show was Boggs. Johnny Johnson moved up in the second. Steve Francis was third. And Don Hobbs, the top four cars, now moved in to the 1989 World's 100. 
and the balance of the field, including the three-time World 100 winner, Larry Moore, will be missing this year's race. Larry Moore finishing 11th position is out of the World 100 for 19 I think it's time to check out some of these trophy queens. Earl's brought down here to uh, stand around with the winner of this race. So uh, there they are. And next up, it's the 1989 World 100 introduction. The World 100. As the Queens come across the track, the, uh, the guys in the pits, uh, all their attention seem to get away from the race car and head for the stage. A little problem with one of the trophies coming across the track, the guy carrying that trophy hit a piece of that slippery clay and down he went. The trophy was broke. Here's the lineup for the 1989 World's 100. It's John Gill on the pole, Willie Kraft outside front row, Jeff Aki, the rookie, starting in second, third spot, then Donnie Moran, Charlie Schwartz, 2C, Billy Moyer, 21, Bloomquest, the 18 car, Steinhaus, 21, then Bob Pierce, 32, Rayburn, CJ1, Gary Stuhler, 44, Tom Lyon, 3, Eddie Carrier, Bob Earl, 44 car, Williams, the 19, Smith, double zero, Johnson, the one J car, another J Johnson, the 93 car, then Jeff Purvis starting 19th in the 15 car. Alongside of him is Jack Boggs in the B4 car, and winner of that B main, Randy Boggs, 17. There's your starting field, and Bloomquest checking things over here. Here's the first breakdown, 22,000 to win from the track, plus a $3,000 bonus from J.W. Hunt, that's 25,000 to win. 5,600 for second, 46 for third, 41 for fourth, 36, 31, 26, right down the line. The 14th through 24th position pays $1,000. Some of the past winners in this year's race is Charlie Swartz, won at 80, he starts fifth. Bloomquest won at 88, he starts 17th. Jeff Purvis won at three times, he starts 19th. Randy Boggs won at 1987, he starts 21st. We have four past winners. Let's talk to some of the guys in the lineup. Well, John, is this your year? I'll tell you in about half an hour. <laughs> I hope so. On the pole, driving for Ray Gotze, it's John Gill, the K1 car. And look at that, Gotze shining his hood. <laughs> what a pit man. Well, Jeff, you ready? Ready as you see. This your best start over here? Yeah, His only start, rookie this year, Jeff McKee. Well, you ready? He starts second, Willie Kraft, in the 83 car. And Bloomquest checking everybody's tires. You know, last month when you guys was here, uh, Jerry put me on the spot and said, pick a winner, and I got your name. Don't let me down. <laughs> yep, I had my money on Moran. Johnny Moran, the 99 car, will be starting it's in fifth World's 100. The last few seconds here, Charlie. You still feel pretty good? I feel pretty good. You look damn good in your heat race. Huh? Is this really the motor you won the, the, the Wedge Nationals with? 84 or something yeah, like that? Sure is. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to have some luck, but I feel good about it. Well, everybody needs a little luck. He starts fifth, Charlie Schwartz. Starting in eighth position, it's Gibby Steinhaus, the 21 car. Bob, is this the year you do it? I think we can. Uh, Feels good to me. You feel pretty good, huh? Yeah. Bob Pierce, he'll be starting in ninth position. Starting 10th is designer builder C.J. Rayburn. Gary, you've always looked good. Every time I've seen you run this race, this year you're going to come up to the front and win it? <laughs> starting 11th, it's Gary Stuhler. He finished fourth in 1988. There's Eddie Carrier. Well, you got to the feature of those wheels and yeah. 
Show How's it feel? It feels pretty good. He starts 13th, the 24X car. Eddie Curry. I, I don't know if now, since the track's changed, you know, the track changed should have helped this car. Good luck to you, Eddie. Thank you. Freddie Smith, nine consecutive World 100. Starts 16th tonight. So I can't hardly find you in there. John Williams in the 19th car will be starting in 15th position. This your year, Dave? I don't know yet. Got a long way to go in here. Dave Johnson starts 17th. And Jeff Purvis way back in 19th. Way back this year, Jeff. Yeah, good starting position, isn't it? Good starting position. <laughs> what makes you look that much better when you win it, though? Starting 19th, the three-time winner, Jeff Purvis. Remember, he was disqualified from his heat race. Yeah, the team, team second. Blackjack Boggs in the B4 car. He starts 20th. He finished third in 83 and 88. Jack Boggs. Steve Francis in the 15 car. His fourth consecutive World 100 start, he's starting 23rd. Way at the tail, it's Don Hobbs. All but my logo. Gonna make it to the front? I'm gonna try. That's all anybody can do. Starting 24th, the back of the lineup, Don Hobbs. There's a look at him, folks. The, the greatest late model dirt track racers in the country here tonight at Eldora Speedway as the 1989 running of this race is about to get underway. They're about to announce, gentlemen, start your engines, and 24 of these powerful late models will get underway, fire up those powerful engines, and head around the Eldora Speedway 100 times for a $25,000 purse, the biggest one yet at Eldora. What a sight as the 24 cars pour out of the track. They start warming up their tires. John Gill and Willie Kraft will be setting the pace. And starting way back in 19th position, it's the 15 car of Jeff Purvis. A hundred hard laps around the fast Eldora Speedway. And Charlie Swartz has turned to the pits. Swartz, who was going to be starting up at the front of this race, has relinquished that start to go back into the pits. He must have some serious problems. Bad break for good time, Charlie, as he's in the pits, as the track is now closed, and Charlie will have to come back out on the tail. Charlie Swartz scheduled to start up in the front. Now goes to the tail. Swartz coming back out of the pits. He'll go to the tail. Swartz in two is rolling. He'll lose his spot. He'll start back at the tail. The pace setter's coming down now for the white line. In K1, Kraft in 83, bring it around turn number three. They head toward that white line. Now they begin to pick up the pace. There's the green flag. The World 100 is underway. the lead, it's Willie Kraft in the 83 car. Donnie Moran moved into second. Side by side down the straightaway. Donnie Moran is taking over the lead down the straightaway. Moran moves into the lead. As he does the yellow flag waves and wheels are flying off. We've got a multi-car pile up in turn one. Moyer, Freddie Smith, Steve Francis. Here's a slow-mo replay. Somebody got into the, uh, Moyer lost a right rear tire and Axel got into the fence. Come to a stop in the middle of number one turn and Steve Francis gets into him along with Freddie Smith. The track was clear, the race restarted. 
and Billy Moyer, Eddie Carrier, and Steve Francis, and Freddie Smith all involved in that tangle. And all but Billy Moyer were able to come back out on the restart. Beat. Moyer is being pulled into the pits. Billy Moyer in car number 21. Tough break going to Moyer. Very fine competitor. He was one of the favorites coming in tonight. Bad break for Billy Moyer. The red flag out now. And if you remember, Scott Bloomquist had been looking at all the cars, checking their right rear tires as they were lined up on the straightaway. And now he's got his crew dragging out some new rubber. And Purvis back into pits. He's got his car jacked up again, doing some work on it. But allowed to work on these cars as long as they don't hold the race up. Bloomgrass coming back out now. He's got new rubber on. A complete restart for the World 100. Hey, Gotzi, Willie Kraft again setting the pace with Steve McKay, Donnie Moran, Bloomgrass falling in behind. Starter looks it over. He tells him one more lap, guys. Keep it lined up. That's. Animal Miller, Dan Miller on the flags there. Nineteen cars able to continue racing. One hundred racing laps still to go. The nineteenth annual World One Hundred. On the pole. Car number K one. They're picking up their speed, coming down, and Jack Boggs is pulling out. Boggs is pulling out. The green flag waves. Jack Boggs has to wait till they go by. He does pull out onto the track. He'll be way at the back of that field, but he's on the track. Billy Kraft in the lead. Donnie Moran again makes his move and moves into the lead. Your race leader is Donnie Moran, the first lap of the restart. And Moran's car is hooked up tonight. We're already starting to pass the cars at the back of the pack on the second circuit of this World's 100. Donnie Moran stretching out that lead. Willie Kraft running in second position. And John Gill, Steve Akai, Bloomquist running in fifth position in the 18 car. And then from the back of the pack, now slowing down, Jeff Purvis in the 15 car. No slowing down for Donnie Moran tonight. He's got that bullet chassis really hooked up. A lot of close wheel to wheel racing down the straightaway in the back of the pack, running three and four abreast through these wide turns of Eldora Speedway. A 10 car lead for Donnie Moran. The 44 car, Buddy James. And the one J car, that's Johnson. And Swartz. Remember, Charlie had to go back to the back of the pack. He's moving up very fast towards the front. Driving at Swartz chassis that's owned by his son, Adi Swartz. Black and white two car, Charlie Swartz doing a great job of advancing. And the K1 car, John Gill slowing down. He has a right rear tire flat. Gill is coming to a stop on the straightaway by the starter stand. That's going to bring out the yellow flag. Watch for Gill now to dash down to the pits and try to get that tire change. The flag went out, out of the track to line up these guys to get them back in proper position. Gill pointing towards his right rear tire, saying, give me a right rear tire, guys. I want to keep out of here in this race. He's got to pull off the track. He does pull into the pits. His pit crew grabbing the jacks and the tires are heading for that right rear tire. Ray Gatsy, the car owner, is now his chief pit man. As Donnie Moran out in front. Donnie looking great in that J.B. Cal number 99. Here's a restart. Moran, Willie Kraft running second. Jeff Fakai running third. And Gibby Steinhaus the 21 S cars fourth, followed by Scott Bloomquist and Freddie Smith in sixth position. And the restart, and the green flag comes back out on this single file lineup. Gill got back out on the back of the pack as Moran comes down for the green flag and the restart. And 
again, pulling a very fast lead. Donnie Moran's car is absolutely the fastest car here tonight. There's no question about that. Willie Kraft running second, but he's now 10 car lengths behind Donnie Moran. Charlie Schwartz still doing a good job of moving up towards the front. for fourth position now Scott Bloomquist and Gibby Steinhaus. Right behind them it's Freddie Smith double zero. As your race leader it's still Donnie Moran running second still Willie Kraft in the 83 car although Willie seems to be slowing down now and Steve Akai putting pressure on that second position. Great race for the third spot now developing between Akai, Bloomquist, as Donnie Moran continues to drive a perfect race with that bullet chassis. He's able to run the low line or jump up to the high side. Still running about a half a track lead over second place Willie Kraft. Bob Pierce running in sixth position, the 32 car. Randy Boggs having his problems at the back of the pack in the 17 car. As Donnie Moran is now starting to put a lap on the 15 car. And that's Steve Francis. Francis running in the 11th position. Up against the wall, Francis Smacks that wall there, and he's about to get lapped by the race leader, Donnie Moran. Still a battle between Scott Bloomquist, Steve Akai. Unbelievable moves by Donnie Moran, the 99 cars. He's working the track high and low, now putting a lap on B4, Blackjack Boggs. In fact, I believe this is the second time he's went around Blackjack Boggs tonight. He's heading to lap the entire field here tonight, Eldora Speedway, a feat that's never been done in any World's 100 in the past 19 years. After coming back out, John Gill uh, moving up a little bit towards the front. John Preston running in 14th, 15th position. Willie Graff slowing down now. He's been overtaken. By Steve Akai. As your race leader, we, we've got another yellow flag. Yellow flag, uh, 19 car, John Williams. Under the fence there on the back stretch. Lap number 25, 75 laps remain in this World 100. The green flag back out on the restart. It's Donnie Moran out in front. Bloomquist still battling with the 21 car. He's now moved ahead of the 21 car and into second position. Bloomquist running in second spot. 
Willie Kraft has dropped out of the action. Jeff Akai is now running in third position. Freddie Smith running in fourth position. As Gary Stuller still moving up towards the front in the 44 car along with Charlie Swartz in the two car. Bloomquist now trying to put a lap on CJ1 of CJ Rayburn. And CJ is presently running in seventh position. The race leader, Donnie Moran, has lapped all but the top four cars. Second place of Bloomquist has now lapped all but the top seven. Freddie Smith running in third right behind Bloomquist. He's also trying to put a lap on the seventh place car. An unbelievable job of driving for young Donnie Moran out of Fraseyburg, Ohio, as he is lapping the field in Eldora tonight in a car that's running perfectly and hooked up to perfection on a fast Eldora Oval. The defending champion of the 1988 World's 100, Scott Bloomquist in the 18 car, is also doing a great job of getting through some of the slower traffic, but he's still a half a lap behind Donnie Moran, and Moran is starting to close in on the back of the fourth place car. just went around Jeff Akai who was running in fourth place and put a lap on Akai. Smith the double zero car keeping Bloomquest in sight. That's Bob Pierce in the 32 car is running in seventh position. Bailing with the 44 car of Gary Stuhler. Stuhler running in fourth. Charles Schwartz running in sixth position. And a fantastic job. Schwartz had to restart at the tail of the race. And Moran just puts a lap on the 1987 World's 100 winner, Randy Boggs. Next 15 minutes, Donnie Moran drove a perfect, flawless race in his bullet number 99 as he continued to pick off the lap cars, putting a second lap on the 15 car of Steve Francis. Francis running in 11th position has been lapped twice now by race leader Donnie Moran. The only car on the same lap with Moran is now the 18 car of Scott Bloomquist. And Moran is closing in very fast behind Bloomquist, trying to put a lap on him. Smith in double zero car, presently running in third position. He's already been lapped by the race leader, Donnie Moran. C.J. Rayburn in the one C.J. car, running in eighth position.
Al Bloomquist putting a lap on the 1987 World 100 winner. You're looking at the 87 and 88 winners right there, two top drivers. As Scott Bloomquist makes his move around and laps the 17 car and then makes his move around Francis. It's the second lap on Steve Francis. Your race leader, Donnie Moran, as this race is nearing to a close, and Donnie still would like to get a lap on the second place car of Scott Bloomquist. As he's closing in the race half over on the tape, we're going to be moving up now to the last 10 laps of the race. As the field has shortened up to about 12 cars running, and Donnie Moran is continuing to lap these cars one by one as he makes lap around Eldora Speedway in a perfect fashion. His bullet chassis was working to perfection tonight in the Eldora Oval. As he's closing in, his sights are set on the second place car of Scott Bloomquist. Now about a quarter lap from being overtaken by Tony Moran. And Moran is closing in that gap faster and faster each lap. Still running and doing a great job out there is the two car of Charlie Swartz. Schwartz also about to be overtaken by Bloomquist. And Charlie is presently running in sixth position. Smoke coming out of Randy Boggs' car. He's retiring to the pits. Bad break for the 1987 winner of the World's 100, Randy Boggs, as he retires on lap number 70. We've now moved to the last 10 laps of the race. Donnie Moran has come within a few car lengths, overtaking Scott Bloomquist in the 18 car. The only car he has not lapped in this race so far is Bloomquist. Has Bloomquest in sight. Five laps remain as he moves up on the tail of Scott Bloomquest, looking for his opportunity to make a move around Bloomquest and lap the entire field for our World's 100. This is an unprecedented feat if it can happen. He makes his move around him now. Bloomquest back around him down the straightaway. They don't touch each other. They're side by side. Bloomquest is back. Taking that lap back away from Donnie Moran, but down the back stretch, Moran stands on the gas again. And now he's back into some slower traffic, so Bloomquist is able to get back in front of Moran to keep from being overtaken and being lapped. Now Donnie drops to the bottom. Again, the lap car is placing some action, and here's our running side by side down the straightaway. Again, no contact. Bloomquist is slowing down. He's out of the race on lap number 98. Running second, he's out of the race. Donnie Moran is going on to come down for the 99th lap, the white flag lap. Bloomquist is sitting on the back stretch. The 19th winner is sitting on the track with two laps remaining. And coming down for a checkered flag, it's Donnie Moran. He picks up a victory, the $25,000 victory, the world's 100 for 1989. He drops down and goes by and gives a friendly wave to his racing buddy there, Scott Bloomquist, who got in some problems and stopped there on the back stretch where he set for two laps and still will finish up in the running. The only driver completing 100 laps this year for the World's 100 was Donnie Moran. Freddie Smith had 98 laps in. Gary Stuller 
And then he laps in. And there's a look at the balance of the field and the amount of laps they got in. And Donnie Moran picked up a fantastic victory, winning by two laps, 1989 World's Wonder. And right away, he's congratulated from his father, Ron Moran. Now let's listen to a few words from Donnie Moran. Necessarily wear all these girls kissing on him, but he takes it in stride. A great winner of the 1989 World's 100, Donnie Moran. And now let's bring that whole Moran team up on the stage. This has been a CIS Race Review video presentation. Thank you for watching.